Thank you. Thank you for the speakers for giving me an opportunity to talk. Um, so I mean, I have a lot of names in the title, but I hope that this is pretty down to earth for everyone. Um, so I'm happy that the two talks before me were about orbifolds because I'm going to continue that tradition here. Um, what I'm going to talk about is the birational geometry of Bergman hoops Krawitz mirrors using classical techniques, namely the Shiota map. Um, the, what I'm going to be working on is hypersurfaces of weighted projective spaces with symmetry groups on the, um, the potentials. Um, so I'm going to start by um, letting you guys get introduced to BHK mirror duality, and then I'm going to give a birational description of the mirrors um, as quotients of Fermat hypersurfaces, and then I'm going to um, talk about multiple BHK mirrors that might happen in the same deformation space, um, and give an example of time is allowed. Okay. So um, I'm going to start with an invertible matrix A um, with all non-negative matrix integer entries. This will give me a, um, a potential that's going to be n plus 1 mono monomials in n plus 1 uh, variables. Um, I'm going to impose that my polynomial is quasi-homogeneous, so it gives me a, um, a hypersurface in a, uh, a well-defined hypersurface in some type of weighted projective space with charges Q sub i. Um, and I'm going to take F sub A to be quasi-smooth. What this means is any singularity that my hypersurf is going to have is going to be inherited by the weighted projective space. Okay? Um, the charges can be um, just defined using just the um, entries in the inverse matrix to A. And uh, we can say that the hypersurface X sub A is going to be a Calabi-Yau if the sum of the um, entries in the inverse matrix of A uh, equals one. On the other hand, um, so that's going to be where I'm going to focus my talk. Um, but if you want to just make a sub or the um, sum of the entries of the inverse matrix just an integer, um, that will be when you have a Fano Calabiao. Okay, and that just means that the in, there's a smaller Hodge diamond in the middle that's going to be, look like the that of a Calabiao. Okay, but um, Berglund Hoops. Krawitz mirror duality um, is only well defined right now in the Calabi-Yau condition as I'm going to state it. Okay. Um, so this F sub A that I defined actually has a lot of symmetries. So what you can do is you can define the diagonal automorphisms that are just coming from scaling symmetries from the C star n plus one. Um, you can generate it by just taking um, just e to the two pi i and then uh, elements inside the um, inverse matrix. Um, but you don't want to quotient out by the whole um, diagonal automorphism group. I mean, for the mirror quintic, that's going to be uh, z mod 5z to the fourth. So what you want is you're going to want all of those that preserve the homomorphic, homomorphic n0 form. Okay? So that's just your SL f sub a. Okay? But there's trivial, or I'm sorry, that's going to be z mod 5z to the fifth. And then this is going to be z mod 5z to the fourth for the mirror quintic. And then you're going to have elements inside this that are actually acting trivially on your weighted projective space. Okay? So that's your exponential grading operator that you have here. Okay? So when you take a quotient of something like the mirror quintic, the mirror is going to be taking the z mod 5z to the third that's going to be SL f sub a uh, quotiented out by your exponential grading operator. Okay? So what we have now is we're going to choose a group in between JF, your exponential grading operator and your SLF sub A, and you're going to get a Calabi-Yau orbifold because we preserved our holomorphic n comma zero form. Okay? So the question is, what is the mirror to this Calabi-Yau orbifold? Well, um, Berglund Hoops started this question um, in the early 90s, and what they, their keen insight is that you should look at the potential associated to the transpose matrix. Okay? So, this wasn't quite exactly what you would want. So in order to actually um, get the right Hodge numbers, what you have to do is you have to quotient out by what's called the dual group. Okay? And this is a really um, kind of um, obtrusive definition, but I mean, it's what you would want. It's the thing, the, um, you, I don't worry about this right now. I'm going to explain it in a better way soon. But um, what you can do is you get this dual group that contains the exponential grading operator for um, your new weighted projective space, and you get a new Calabi-Yau orbifold, uh, ZA transpose, G transpose, 
Okay, that's just X A transpose quotient out by your dual group. Okay, so if you have that G is between your SLS sub A and your exponential grading operator, you get some type of duality with your dual group. Okay, so you get two well-defined Calabria orbifolds. Now the nice classical mirror symmetry statement on the level of Chen Ruan cohomology is actually true. So Kyoto and Ruan prove in 2009 that your Chen Ruan Hodge diamond is actually going to flip in the way that you would want it to. Okay. Um, one nice thing about, uh, or a feature that you have with BHK mirror duality is that your, it kind of is a nice contrast with Batyrev mirror duality a priori. So what you can have is um, two hypersurfaces that might be hypersurfaces inside the same uh, toric variety, say P5, where the BHK mirrors are not going to be hypersurfaces in the same toric variety. So in a paper of Doran and Garavuzo, they give this nice table of all these quintics inside P4 and where their BHK mirrors actually lie. And they'll be in um, quotients of uh, P4, just like the mirror quintics, but also they'll be in weighted projective spaces quotiented by some other group. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about the birational geometry of this BHK duality because that might be something that will tie in here. Okay. So let's see. Okay. So I'll start with talking about Shiota maps. So um, Shiota maps were started in the 80s by Shiota um, to actually look at um, explicit algorithms to compute the card num numbers of Delsart surfaces. Yeah? I didn't say that they're wrong. But they're different. But they're not the same as what you get from this. Right, you'll get different things. Because I mean, you have this whole deformation space when you look at um, like in P4, right? And then you only have that one family. Um, but I mean, You'll see what I mean, but it, everything's good, right? This is a no worries, feels good type of talk, right? Okay. Um, so uh, you have, uh, so you take the Shiota map, okay? And what, it, what you do is you take your A inverse and you multiply it by D so that a positive integer, so that B only has integer entries. Um, if A was diagonal, then you're going to have um, A inverse is only positive, but if it's not diagonal, then you're going to have um, some negative entries, okay? So you get a rational map from P into a weighted projective space that's just multiplying your, um, so your mapping is just monomials, okay? It's pretty simple. So what you can do is you can see that it restricts to a rational map from the Fermat degree D hypersurface to X sub A. Um, and then you just take B, the Shiota map associated to B transpose that's going to just take you to X A transpose. So you have these two maps that are going to the hypersurfaces related to your mirrors, okay? So what you can do is you can do the same thing with the symmetries that are going on here. Okay, so you start with phi b star that's going to give you a surjective map, a surjective map from your diagonal automorphisms of your um, Fermat to the diagonal automorphisms of your potential that you started with. Okay, so there, this is the same thing as z mod dz to the m plus one, right? And the, what it, each one of those generators map to is your generators of ot f sub a. Okay. Um, if you just take the inverse image according to this homomorphism of your group that you start with, you'll just get H. We'll call it H. Okay. Now, if you do the same thing here, what you can get is you get this dual group that you can reinterpret. So what I mean by reinterpreting the dual group, um, this H perp B, um, what it is is if you view these as two modules, Z mod DZ to the N plus one, then it's going to be the perp if you're doing linear algebra. Okay, um, you just take the inner pairing associated to your matrix B. Okay, now the theorem um, first proven with Beanie, Van Hamen, and myself um, for projective hypersurfaces by Beanie for um, weighted, project weighted projective hypersurfaces, and then the Berglund hoops case myself, um, and then put into this language is that phi B and B, phi B transpose are birational to quotient maps. And then you can actually say that ZAG, the quotient, uh, the orbifold, um, is birational to the, this quotient that has to do with your inverse image. And then your um, BHK mirror is just a quotient of the same hypersurface just associated to this dual group, OK? I don't mind time, OK. All right. So, um, 
Let's use this to actually look at the feature of Berglund Hoopsch giving you different hypersurfaces and different weight, quotients of weighted projective spaces, okay? So given two F sub A and F sub A prime and groups G and G prime as above, we're going to get two Calabi out orbifolds, Z A G and Z A prime G prime, okay? Um, so even if they're in the same family of hypersurfaces in the same toric variety, um, their BHK mirrors might not be in the same hypersurface, as I said. Um, so the question that you might have is, when are the BHK mirrors of these two Calabi out orbifolds actually going to be bi birational to each other? Um, so the answer here is um, when the groups G and G prime are equal, then you're going to be fine, okay? So let's kind of give a sketch of a proof here, okay? So what I'm going to start with is I take the Shiota maps, um, D A inverse and B prime to be D prime A prime inverse. I can construct all four um, Shiota maps from the same Fermat variety of degree D times D prime. Um, and then I get four Shiota maps, all to the hypersurfaces associated to your original two F sub A and F sub A prime, and then the transposes thereof. Okay. The next thing I can do is I quotient by the groups. So this is quotienting by G, G transpose, G prime, G prime transpose, okay? So all four of my Calabi out orbifolds are um, quotients of the same uh, Fermat hypersurface in projective space, okay? So uh, we have the following birational equivalences, and then you just prove a technical limit about your um, groups H perps, or H perp and H prime perp relative to the right inner pairings, and then you find that they're equal, okay? So if G and G prime are equal, then the Calabi out orbifold Z A transpose, G transpose, and um, Z A prime transpose, G prime transpose are birational, okay? Um, this was proven twice, in, or more or less twice in the same year this year. Um, Shoemaker did this with the additional hypothesis that X sub A and X A, a prime are um, in the same uh, toric variety. They're the same uh, weighted projective space. And then it's, I found that it's uh, using this technique that uh, you just need the G and G prime are equal. Um, his technique uses toric geometry. Mine is just kind of classical. Let's just do maps, right? Um, all right. Uh, what how much time do I have? Like 10 minutes? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Okay. So um, we have, let's give an example. Let's start with two polynomials, right? So these are pretty cool, right? Um, so you get two hypersurfaces, XA and XA prime, that are inside the same weighted projective space. And the group here, I'll choose, right? Um, the part that's the exponential grading operator is just right here, right? It's associated to the charges, okay? Uh, where zeta is just the 20, a primitive 24th root of unity, okay? Um, both the calabi out orbifolds have chin ruan Hodge numbers the same, okay? The mirrors here are, we're going to have just FA transpose is going to be the same as FA because it's just diagonal. And then I have FA prime transpose that's going to give you a different hypersurface and a different way to project this space, right? So your here you have two different BHK mirrors that you're going to create, but they're, um, they're in different weighted projective spaces as hypersurfaces. Uh, the group I'm going to quotient XA transpose by is just the trivial one, um, and then G prime transpose is just going to be a Z mod 2Z. Um, so I get that um, the BHK mirror to my Fermat quotiented by these two elements, or the group generated by them, is um, Birational to the one that's just a hypersurface in this way to project a space modulo Z mod 2Z. And these both have the right Hodge numbers, Chen Ruan Hodge numbers. Okay, so then this is kind of how the Shiota map works with it. The nice thing about this is it's very computable. Um, so you get these um, groups just falling out from doing the linear algebra. Um, and you can see that H perp B prime and H, or H prime perp B prime and H perp B are going to be equal to one another. Um, all right, um, so I think that's all I have to say about the multiple mirrors right here. Um, I just wanted to finish by uh, talking about further work. 
So um, a, some a direction of this that I've been kind of told about by Shakarov at Johns Hopkins is um, sure we have that they're birational, but really if you want some type of homological mirror symmetry result, you would want to know if there are a sequence of flops, right? Um, so I mean that's fine um, when you, I mean the way you would want to look at this is you can use a theorem of Kawamata that um, if you have two smooth collabials and they're birational to one another, then what you would have is um, you, you can say that there's a sequence of flops that would work out, so then you'd have derived equivalents by Bridgeland, right? So um, how would we do this? Well, I, I, we're pretty much done if, you're, um, if you have a crepent resolution. So the crepent resolutions here, if, if you have crepent resolutions for ZA transpose and Z, uh, G transpose and ZA prime transpose, G prime transpose, then you're already done just having the birationality of those mirrors um, if the crepent resolutions exist. Now, something that would be more satisfying, to me at least, um, would be if we could do something using variation of GIT, uh, which Colin Deemer pointed out to me um, in February, um, that these are all quotients of the same Fermat variety. So it would be really nice if you could show that you're just follow, um, going into different chambers of, um, of GIT and then use the result of Ballard, Favero, and Katsarkov um, in order to have the derived equivalence. Um, other things that are uh, other directions, a more classical direction, is the following two. Um, so what you can do, um, so BHK mirrors um, classically are just these points. And it's very restrictive. You have this um, kreutzer skarka uh, classification of which uh, pot potentials have an invertible poten potential that's quasi-smooth and quasi-homogeneous. But you can actually deform these one, uh, with one parameter deformations, if you so desired, um, inside this. And, and um, in certain cases, if you take that there, um, if you choose the right one parameter deformations and um, impose that your F sub A's live inside the same um, weighted projective space, then you can actually prove that the Picard Fuchs equations of the uh, mirrors are equal. And um, that's another nice statement about the Hodge structure here. Um, with number theory, um, you will, there's um, project starting, um, which came out of a BAMP workshop with um, Chuck Doran, De La Asa, Malmendier, Witcher, Salerno, Harder, and Missing one. Am I not? Sperber. Um, where you can actually use the Picard Fuchs equations to actually see that the alternate mirrors that you're constructing um, have a factor in the, uh, have a same factor in the congruent zeta functions. So this is kind of a direction to go for um, some type of arithmetic mirror symmetry. But I think that's all I wanted to say. Um, so I'll open up for questions. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I mean, yeah, so I think that this comes down to being related to um, this paper of Koblitz in the 70s, um, that there should be some type of zeta function um, that has to do with the uh, diagonal automorphisms, because I th he gives an alternative proof of what I think uh, Jolene did. Um, so I think that's something that you can push forward. That's something that I'm definitely thinking about right now. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>